Hi fellow traders, welcome to another edition of Rolling with Ed. Well, I guess this is gonna be sitting and waiting with Ed because that's what I'm doing. Sitting and waiting in the car. But um, today I'm gonna answer one of the most controversial questions and really probably the most popular question that I get asked all the time. And it's, why do most retail traders fail? Why do over 90% of retail traders fail and I say it's controversial because there's so many different answers that people give um, the most common one is going to be lack of proper education so lack of education is 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 really a, a bad thing but when you're day trading swing trading stocks education the, the education part is really simple. I mean, I can teach you in a couple of hours, I can teach you how a couple of strategies that you could day trade and you can make a consistent amount of money off of it. Um, that's just how simple the strategies are. The reason why people fail is because basically it's a lack of discipline. The inability to follow your trade plan, the inability to execute your trade your strategy in the market with on a consistent basis you um, break your rules you can't wait you get in early or you let things run you hold things a little bit too long and you end up in some cases blowing up your account so it's basically a lack of discipline that, that's what it boils down to and if you sit down and think about it and look at all of the reasons that you lose money it's not the strategy if you execute it properly yeah you're gonna lose sometimes There's no strategy is a hundred percent perfect or foolproof but you have to do it the same and here's where traders run into problems let's say you're trying to get in the trade and you jump in early before it actually triggers an I'm sorry. Before it actually triggers an entry, and you jump in, and it works out, and you make good money, and the next time, it it may work out again, and you're like, man, I'm not sticking to this rule. I'm I'm gonna get in because I know if it's going down, and then the next two or three or four times it doesn't work, and you it ends up stopping you out then you created a bad habit and now you're saying the strategy doesn't work or and and all of this when when in reality you're not following the parameters that you set for your strategy so you started not wanting to wait um you may be holding it past your stop and doing all of these things that if it works one time god forbid it works you're off your game and so that's the difficult part of it so I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here um, on the computer so that you can really get a, a good feeling and understand what I'm talking about but you guys know how easy it is to learn the strategies you you know once you see it setting up and you understand how to identify it when the market is working you know what it looks like but waiting and waiting and waiting until the setup actually triggers and then what happens sometimes is the setup um, you're waiting for it to happen and you get this huge volatile candle that just blows up your trading range I mean that happened to me today but you have to eat that understand that hey this isn't the only trade that's gonna happen to me we're gonna have other trades so don't worry about it let's write that off and let's move on to the next one all right and it's hard I know because you're sitting there and you feel like you have to be in a trade or you're sitting there and you hear somebody saying they took this trade or they took that trade and you just have to be in a trade you feel like you're not working 
if you're not in a trade. You're not maximizing your time and your, your effort by not being in a trade. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And that all falls into lack of discipline. Not being able to sit there, wait, and execute your strategy the, according to the rules and guidelines that you laid out. Uh, that's that's the issue. That's why over 90% of traders fail. A lot of these guys are educated. And they're educated enough to be able to trade and make winning trades and, you know, learn winning strategies. But it's sticking to them. Always wanting more. Not feeling like they're doing enough. And it really, really hurts you. And I'm sure as you're thinking about this, you're saying, hey, I know exactly what he's talking about. Because I've been through it. I know a lot of traders I work with are still going through it. Um, but it, it's the toughest thing you're going to have to do. And that is what separates the traders that make money versus the traders that just give it all away and then end up giving up trading altogether. All right, guys. So I recorded this that video a couple of days before my blow up yesterday and I know I'm being over dramatic about it because I didn't come close to like blowing up my account but it felt like a blow up that I was blowing up a more or less an implosion because the loss I took is like over twice as what I the loss I would normally take on a bad day and I broke every rule known to man and I I was just outside of myself. And there's a very good reason for it. Um, not an excuse, but a reason. And one that I'm responsible for, 100%. And I'm taking 100% responsibility for it. But knowing why things happen the way they did and what's happening is the key to all of this. And so we're going to talk about that here um, in a minute but this is what causes again this is what causes most new traders to never make it is the lack of discipline and I showed it across the board yesterday I mean no doubt about it there's no other no excuse for it um, there are reasons why things happen the way they did but I'm taking responsibility again so let's look at Wednesday real quick before we move into yesterday because this chart or this trade is what happened in this trade is really important for um, what happened on Thursday so in this trade I was getting an opening range breakdown it's perfect setup um, beautiful nothing but but green grass under the five minute opening range low. I get in, it dips down a couple cents, and then it rips up and stops me out. Hits my um, max stop, and I'm done. And then it, it runs up, and then it comes back down, and eventually it breaks down, and it gives some really good trades here. Now, I did trade it later on in the day and got a little bit of it, but you know nothing nothing to sneeze at but this is the scenario I want you to remember here how this stopped me out it went up and then it eventually made the move and this is what's been happening for the last couple of weeks and over a period of time it really gets frustrating so it's like the the stock is going in the direction that I want it to but uh, my timing is off or I get stopped out and it just whatever the case is it just it eventually works and I'm not in it and it, it does get a little frustrating so just kind of keep your mind on this because I'm going to refer back to it um, and what happened yesterday so Wednesday um, only 171.95 
was happy to be green um, extremely happy to be green so I'm not going to complain about that alright so this was Thursday um, this was Roku and it was supposed to be a, a five minute opening range breakdown but it is nothing and when I looked at this I'm like that's not a five that's that's not a five minute ORB it's not I don't care how I looked at it or how I assessed everything it's it's not because number one when I get a candle that has a wick longer than the body that breaks the the setup is broken there's no entry trigger there's nothing because you've got a wick longer than the body and I don't know what the hell I was doing here I waited for it to get under um, the five minute opening range low but I waited for this candle to close and then I waited for this candle to make a lower low I got a little bit of slippage here and I got in and then of course it turned around and, and stopped me out it was gonna pull back and that ripped all the way back up but you know this was just idiotic so I can't blame this on the strategy like the BA trade the day before it's just that that initial hit didn't work eventually the trade worked out but that initial hit didn't work this was a failure in execution completely a complete failure for me so I take and bear all the responsibility on that now this is where the blow up happened now remember the BA trade I showed you on Tuesday that I took on Tuesday I mean Wednesday how it 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 um triggered then it pulled back or it bounced and then eventually it did it made the the move I'm thinking BA is gonna do the same it's done this to me so many times in the last couple of weeks I decided that I'm gonna hold I got pissed because it pulled back and I decided I was gonna hold it until it bounced and I was like it is gonna bounce I know it so the hell with it I'm gonna wait and I waited and I waited and I waited and eventually I had to take had to take it off um so it, I did come to my senses at some point but by then look at what I lost I got in at 177.45 got out at 172.85 so I was working on a five point loss and I mean that's unheard of this is not something that I normally do um, on a bad day my loss is five six hundred bucks because that that's where it should be on a really bad day it should never be um, what the hell was it I don't even remember now it should never be seventeen hundred bucks no I lost sixteen ninety one forty two so you might as well say seventeen hundred dollars it should never be that high okay that's like three times what I normally lose on a on a bad day so to me this was a blow up this was me blowing up and, and just losing it all right so was that a good example for you guys no it wasn't but it is a good example for you to see what can happen when you let this stuff get to you and I'm gonna tell you I'm not gonna lie I am burnt out from trading I'm flat burned out this um, quarantine that we've been dealing with has has really taken an, its toll on me because I have not been able to get out and decompress like I normally do every couple of weeks that's been the secret to me staying focused and and when that hat when you lose all of that you lose your discipline you you lose your patience as as we can see in my trading everything starts to erode and 
you know, we normally every couple of weeks, me and the fam, we pack up and go somewhere, whether it's to the coast, whether it's uh, up North Carolina. Um, we go somewhere. You know, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, that's a, a, one of our favorite places. Um, just somewhere we can go, Asheville, just to get away for a couple of days, decompress, and come back refreshed and ready to go. I haven't been able to do that in the last three months, and it is really taking its toll. Now, I do have vacation coming up here in a couple a uh, couple weeks, but I, I still can't go anywhere or, or do anything that we would normally like to do. I mean, we were thinking things were going to be settled, and now everything's ramping back up. I mean, Florida, oh my God, the news that came out about Florida today. You know, so we can't go to Clearwater. Um, it's just it's just a mess and so for me I once I realized and I understood what the problem was I was able to come back today and trade a little bit better I, I still don't have the patience that I need to have um, you know that that's just gonna have to come back but I had a better grip on myself and did not allow myself to get too far off center and so that's something that we're going to as as traders that we really really have to be aware of when we get that when we have that blow up day when we had that day when things just unravel just stop and then we've got to figure out what's going on you know, because when I went to lunch, I told you guys in chat that, you know, I should I try to come back and make it up? Because I know I could make it up. I mean, I, you know, I'd have to trade outside of the way I like to trade that I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys how you have to grow your account. The best way to trade so that you can consistently grow your account. I was going to have to come in and do some some more intuitive type trades and you know kick up the share size and do some things that I really don't want you guys to be doing at this point if you're trying to grow your account and be get consistent in your trading so I went to lunch I thought better of it and didn't even try to come back just say hey tomorrow I know what I need to do and, and let's do it so that was the blow up day and, and this again this was a really good lesson on what happens when your discipline goes away when your patience goes away and you start um, trying to make the market fit what you want to do versus doing what them give taking what the market's giving you or not giving you and then just moving on oh that was NK. I never did send this out yesterday because NKE broke the earnings setup the last hour of the day. So I was looking at the NKE earnings trade, but um, that got messed up. So I never did get to send that email out because it, it would have been a moot point. All right. So BIG. This is one that had a a catalyst. And I was really good, happy for this because it's something that I could trade and it was, um, you know, had an earnings type catalyst that would allow it to move opposite the market. So here's a good example of my patience and not having the patience that I needed to allow this trade to work. And this was a huge, huge miss for me because I never got back in it I was on some other trades and and did not get a chance to get back in this this could have turned my week around honestly I could have made back a big chunk of what I lost yesterday and not even trying to do that just sticking with this stock 
and but it's it's what I'm dealing with right now you know just being burnt out and not really having the patience to allow the market to work and that's why you need to take breaks from now from here on out but a perfect entry opening range breakout um, we hit our first target here I'm looking to put in my next target accidentally didn't I didn't type in the price so as soon as I sent the limit order it it uh it filled which turned out to be a good thing because it would have stopped me back out at break even on that full um, third position that was left so that turned out to be a, a okay thing so I wait we break the channel I get in guess what this thing goes up and just starts coming back down and coming back down I got pissed and took the trade off no pay no patience no patience to let it work and, and look at what happened <clears throat> here's a 52 week high it did exactly what the plan was that I talked about and I shared with you guys pre-market and going into the open that I was looking for this to get to um, the 52 week high then pull back and jump on it as it breaks the 52 week high because usually when it hits the 52 week high first you get profit taking you get a pullback and then the next time it breaks you get a legit rip and I just I lost I, I just didn't get it and it's all a product of just me being burnt out and not managing things the way I should be managing it not having that patience so that was that on big um, which should have been a really good trade so BA um, I waited for this thing to put in a channel like he was the top up here he was the bottom and once we confirmed the break of that channel I got in started taking profit um, I think did I take it all off here I think I took it all off on the first hit and then I waited until we broke below the second one I mean this has to this should be extended out over here once I got it um, took some off here. I should have took two thirds off, but I took half, and then we came back and stopped at break break even, and never really came back. Uh, so that was uh, this trade. So it was okay. I managed it well. I think I did exactly what I needed to do, and I was pretty pleased with this. And then we went to NKE, another one. You know, I was trading BA in through here, so I missed this move. And so I waited. It put in a channel here. I know it dipped below this level here, but this candle never made a lower low, so it never confirmed this break. So this was still the bottom of the channel. Once we confirmed this, I got in and did get a little move, but it's crazy. As soon as this candle washed and hit my target, it ripped right back up and stopped me out at break even. I mean that was that was that and, and that was it for me for the day. Um and I think I did as well as I could with what I'm dealing with personally. So I'm gonna try to do decompress this weekend. Um try to do some stuff to to kind of forget about this next week is a short week we're off Friday um, for the 4th of July the markets closed so we only have a four-day week two more days left in this month and and in the quarter and then we can start fresh um, so I'm gonna do everything I can to really um, decompress and so I can try to finish out this short week um it is smooth and as clean as I can all right so 
just so you see, um, we got 414.35 today. Like I said, this isn't bad. This is not bad. If if the big trade, even if I hadn't have um, gotten shaken out of the big trade and I got another piece of that move, I mean, it's no telling what we could have had today. Um, but I'm going to file that. I want to be happy about that, that everything I saw, everything I looked at worked. It did what it was supposed to do. The only person that didn't work well is the person trading it and executing. And so that's something that I, I have to work on. And like I said, I got to get decompressed and get refreshed so that I could knock these last couple of days out. Um, so we did take a, a all day hold on a BA trade. Um, we got in here around 172 and I was looking for this to fade all day. It was working beautifully. We hit the first target 168 and then some damn news comes out and the stock recovers. Um, and, th and this is this is why I always I'm going to have a profit target halfway to my final target. 165 was my final target because I think there's a there's a level at 164.80 something or right at 164.90 and that was my final target so I always pick something halfway there specifically for this purpose and sure enough somebody dropped some news because this thing was coming apart and it would have continued to come apart um, but Hey, that's trading. I mean, that, that's you got to expect that, and you got to roll with the punches. Um, but this was an all-day hold, so I was not going to take it off. I was going to let it run until it ran its course. That's the whole purpose of this: is not to to manage it intraday, just let it work. It was just unfortunate that we got that news, and I honestly thought this level was going to hold. Honestly, I did not think we were going to take this level out. This was on um, the lower aftermarket yesterday. You can see it held as resistance here. It held as resistance here. It held here. So, I, you know, I thought the third time this thing, you had this big candle push up and it failed. I thought we were coming back. Um, but it didn't. And so that was that. Um, still 10, 45, 44. Um, that's not, in, in this account, that's not what I'm, I'm looking for three, four times that on these trades. Um, when I take 500 shares of BA, you know, I'm expecting three grand plus on, on these trades, but it just didn't work out today. Um, so, Ended the week red. Um, this is the worst red week of this year. Um, this should should not happen, you know. But Thursday was was that that day that just it, it just came apart on me. You know, it was that blow up or that implosion or however you want to describe it. Um, still got a decent month going. Um, got a couple of days that you know with two good trade two good trading days. Um, we could close out the month good. I, I think I, I messed myself up too, because when I saw this, I was like, "Man, I I can get five grand for this week, this month." Um, and I think I kind of jinxed myself too, thinking that. But um, still halfway decent month, and I should not give that back in two days. So we're gonna finish the month green, and that's what it's about: continuing to put money in your account. That's how you build wealth. Um, and we're not trying to get rich quick. Uh, as you get better, you know, like what I do in, in my other accounts, I'll go, instead of trading 300 shares, I'll trade five, 600 shares of BA. You know, it it is nothing to me to double size. And you'll get to that point. You'll get comfortable 
and you'll be able to man manage and deal with the risk and, and you'll get there all right but I'm gonna wait and we'll do the equity curve and all of that stuff after the 30th when I close out the month and close out the quarter and you know I'll do a recap video next week after all that stuff's clear cleared out we can take a look at the the uh, equity curve and just kind of go from there all right guys so that wraps it up I hope this is some good weekend watching I hope you learned a lot of lessons from me and my mistakes and knowing when it's time to take a time out take a break take a vacation and kind of reset and and that's what we have to do and hopefully you guys saw how you need it to be when you come back after a bad day like that that you really you just forget about it and you trade to the best of your ability you know even though I had, I had a little bit of patience problem I still managed my risk and I still took good trades still take took good setups and was able to come out with a halfway decent day so you guys have a great weekend enjoy it and we'll be back uh, first thing Monday morning so if I don't see you Sunday um, in our market analysis and swing sessions I will see you on Monday